Uh, there was something about the recording stopped. There's now the recording happening. It looks like it's recording. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, that's fa that's fabulous. Okay, uh, with no corrections to the minutes, let's uh, signify yes, you approve, or no, you don't. Sharon. Yes. Christine. Yes. Thank you, George. Yes. Alex. Yes. Paul. Yes. Xander. Yes. Thank you, Xander. Sean. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Okay, the next set of minutes are from December December fifteenth. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks. Okay. Any corrections to those minutes? Okay. Uh, on the on the uh, motion to approve, Sharon. Yes. Christine. Yes. George. Yes. Alex. Yes. Paul. Yes. Xander. Yes. Thank you. Sean. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. The next item is the town manager's report. Mr. Bockelman. I don't think I have anything to report. Okay. How pleased are you at the prospect that the federal government might be allocating a million dollars to this project? I'm very pleased. I'm hoping that the House of Representatives will organize itself at some point. Um, <laughs> So the country can do its business. But yes, I'm very pleased. That's good news. I think we all are, aren't we? I think it's wonderful news. And and uh, yes. another affirmation by another group uh, of the value of the project. So it's one wonderful news. Okay. Financial update. Sean. Thank you. Uh, so we have, do have a couple invoices. We have one from FAA and one from Collier. So I'll share my screen. Great. Thank you. Um, can you enable sharing, um, Sharon? All right. So I think uh, you see the FAA invoice on the screen. Yep. So uh, Collier says reviewed this um, and approved it consistent with our contract for the work that they've done over the past, um, was this through November? Great. So did someone want to move the approval or recommendation that we pay this invoice? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. OK, any discussion of the invoice? OK, uh, on the motion to approve, Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. Paul? Yes. Xander? Yes. Sean? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Sean, did you have another one? Yes, yeah, so we have one more for uh, Collier's. So this also is through <laughs> November. Um, one thing I'll point out that I think we'll have more um, to update on next time is that um, Collier's has officially uh, pretty much with this invoice build its entire fee for the design phase. Um, uh -huh. Obviously, we are not <laughs> completed with the design phase. So, um, again, we'll update you next time on uh, what that will mean going forward. But um, this is consistent with their prior billings. It's and it's for the month of November. And Craig, oh. if you want to add anything to that, uh, let's. Yeah, Craig, did you want to say anything? Uh, nope, nothing, nothing really to add. Uh, aside from actually that, I've said that. Um, so I've um, looped in the director. Uh, the director is um, in my office to uh, come up with a proposal or a plan for moving forward. And I will work with Sean um, in between meetings. And then hopefully by the next meeting, we'll have uh, a report. Okay, just to be clear, we should have a motion to approve the invoice. So moved. A second? A second. Thank you so much, Christine. Okay, any discussion of this invoice? Okay, 
on the motion to approve, Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Thank you, George? Yes. Thank you, uh, Alex? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. Thank you, Sean? Yes. Xander? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, the next... Um, Austin, there was one other, uh, if, if time doesn't permit, we don't have to. We were going to do a quick budget update as well. Oh. Um, we, were, we were going to do a one a month, so we thought maybe start the month, it would make sense to go over the budget quickly. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Thank you. And I'll share my screen. Oops. Sharon, would you please allow me to share? Thank you. I think you guys can see that now. So um, here's our financial status report. It's the same one that we've been looking at, um, but with updates um, actually through uh, those votes that just took place a moment ago. Um, starting on page one, um, we've, we have not started construction, so we don't have any um, in this category here, any payments in this category, same thing for furnishings. When we go to page two, fees and expenses, those are the invoices we've been receiving. So here's the architect's line. Let me zoom in a little bit. So here's the architect's uh, <coughs> contract or the budget, uh, their contract, which um, if we look all the way over here on column G, um, does exceed the budget. That's the $55,000 um, in additional services. Um, so that money we can move either now or later move from uh, owner's contingency to cover. Uh, my recommendation is wait a little while to see okay. if there are any savings, any of the other line items. Um, I have underneath the architect, um, we had budgeted $100,000 for a furniture designer. While nothing has been contracted, we do have their latest proposal, which is $102,000 and change. Um, so it's a, a little bit over, the budget, same thing. I don't think we should take any action on it at this point. Um, at you know, addressing that little discrepancy, and then the only, um, and we've got down here, project manager, my office, our billings through date um, are uh, just under one hundred ten thousand um, total contract for eight hundred ninety thousand. Um, Cost estimator, the only other thing that we've received a bill for um, was <coughs> 8,000, and we still have a little bit of surplus, five and a half thousand dollars in the budget. Let me just double check page three, right? And then nothing else on page three. These are miscellaneous expenses, which will crop up later, um, but none to date. Okay. Questions about the budget? Okay, thank you, Craig. You have you have more for us. Yes. Um, so I'll show us the schedule. Here we are at the red line. We've you'll note we have just passed. We've made it through this um, extended design period, which was quasi schematic design, quasi design development, as of. December 23rd, the design team submitted the revised schematic design plans to the MBLC, and the, those are under review now. Um, and the design team has begun the true design development phase, which is what we've been talking about the last couple meetings. That's a, a four month effort with a, about a month effort in cost estimating. Um, and then just as a reminder, Let's see, here's our sort of upcoming meetings. So schematic design, submitting that package to MBLC, the design team actually beat the schedule. They got it in before the holidays. Uh, we're anticipating the MBLC approval, approval of that. Hopefully next week, I'll reach out to the MBLC, see if they have any questions or if that's on track. Um, line one of the design development, the uh, Outreach subcommittee, I won't um, steal Alex's thunder uh, and let 
I'll let her report on that um, later this meeting. But our start of design development school building committee meetings and design subcommittee meetings will be in two weeks on January 19th. And then I won't bore everybody with the rest of it, but that's sort of the start. You'll recall it's the start of mm -hmm. the frequent meeting phase to kind of accelerate us through design development. And that's all I have to report, unless there are any questions. Just when do you anticipate, um, when, when do you anticipate that we'll hear back from MBLC? Uh, well, so we're we're hoping for this January 11th, um, but I will reach out to them uh, probably tomorrow and see where where Great. they are with their review. Uh, having received the drawings on December 23rd, I don't suspect yeah. a whole lot of review has gone on. But oh, um, thus okay. far on the project, their reviews have been very uh, quick, uh, very quick turnaround. Good. So I'm hoping for the same. I Thank see you, Alex Chris. has her hand up. Alex. Can you go back to the um, the schedule, please? Yes. So under public commentary, there's a triangle that says period of impact on color selections and interior materials, but we haven't actually gotten anything to get uh, feedback on. So is that going to shift, I assume? Yes, that, that's a very good point, Alex. I didn't change that. The, the triangle will, will extend out into the first couple months Great. Um, to sort of match this schedule here um, where the design team is going to be presenting interior uh, schemes and then we'll be re reviewing them and voting on them so right. i will um, adjust that graphic yeah Thank you. Just, i mean this it was super helpful to have the dates uh in this for us for the outreach committee so to the extent that we could keep keep giving us dates and deadlines that's that's really helpful thank you absolutely thanks okay craig Anything else, Craig? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, no, that, that's all I have. Okay. All right, any other questions for Craig? All right, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Will. Thanks for the work. All right, subcommittee reports. So design subcommittee, Christine. Uh, we have not met, so there's nothing to report on. In the past, uh, looking at the schedule, um, starting on the 19th, it appears the design subcommittee will have pretty much weekly meetings. Um, they're going to be dual notice so that all the committee members can come if they want. Um, I would just love for preparing for these uh, a little clarification from Craig on what to expect or you, Austin, on um, sort of the, what is the goal? How do we see this rolling out? I know the FAA will come and present. Is there a goal for these meetings? It, does it just sort of get introduced and then we do something with it later as a building committee? Just wondering how this is devil in the details. Craig? Um, great, great questions, Christine. Um, so the design team has laid out sort of what they expect. It will be rapid fire for sure um before the meetings so if it's a tuesday meeting say the friday before they've committed to sending what they're going to present it may be um slightly tweaked say on monday because they'll also be working very quickly in uh, quick turnarounds but you'll at least get a general feel for what is coming or what is going to be presented and for the most part tuesdays or the the first meeting of the week the design subcommittee will be a presentation and soliciting feedback. And then later in the week, um, when there is, um, let's see, I'm just looking at the schedule in concept, then the next meeting would be like a um, an LBC meeting at which a decision is hoped to be um, determined. So, and that's in general, because uh, let's see, I didn't, I don't have that. Um, we ha I had that graphic where it was the design team's work plan and I'd overlay it sort of when the meetings were happening. And so for each topic, it's slightly different. Say landscape, I seem to recall, there is a presentation week. And then a couple weeks later is when they'll be looking for, they'll represent based on updates 
on feedback they, 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 they hear, and then there'll be a vote. Uh, whereas interior design was, I think was a quicker, kind of like all we have is one week. So the beginning of the week, they'll be making a presentation. And then at the end of the week, they're looking for a decision. Right. And our hope is to have as many people as possible attend the design subcommittee meeting so that all the questions or suggestions uh, from the committee can be aired before we need to make a decision. Right. Christine, anything else? Yeah, so, you know, outreach is working really hard to get feedback on things. And I know right now, like the gender inclusivity, the toilets, um, when would that come to design? And how does it get implemented or tweaks? Because it's just, and I guess the second part of my question is, so if the first meeting is like a design subcommittee, but then you said that following meetings, they're sort of still design subcommittee because new stuff's being presented, but yet they're also a building committee because, so I'm still a little confused. I know it's rapid fire. It, maybe this needs to be detailed out a little more, our schedule. So does the, uh, Craig, do you want to go back to the, um, uh, the thing that you presented, the blue page with the meetings because maybe that'll be maybe that'll be helpful and and actually let me i always have to fight with my screen here there we go so this is sort of the the blue page of meeting dates uh was derived from uh looking at the design team's work plan which is sort of all the uh the bars and, and lines of text and then my office overlaying when meetings might occur. So let me zoom in a little bit. So just Craig, again, maybe this will be helpful to Christine. It certainly would be helpful to me. Could you go back to the blue page? Sure. So as I understood it, you had a pretty clear idea of what uh, these meetings were gonna be. Is, is, this an, is this the accurate rendering of when we will be meeting and what we will be doing? Yes. Okay. So Christine, does this, uh, does this is this helpful or is there something else? No, I, I'm still confused because of the, number one, it says outreach committee. They're collecting information on the bathrooms, but where does that fit? On what meeting does that fit in? Uh, Craig, when do you expect it will be uh, finalizing the conversation about the bathrooms? So, the window of time we define for soliciting input from the public was through the end of January. And yep. so the earliest that we would be looking for uh, determination from this body would be the February 2nd meeting, but um, could also be like, you know, the February 9th meeting. Um, that topic, because the LBC has already given direction on the layout, <coughs> that was the, that was what the design team really needed in the short term. And then now the information they're soliciting is more <coughs> of a privacy level um and so that's something that doesn't have a hard deadline like it doesn't need to be done by february 2nd you know ideally it would be sometime in the say first month of this design development effort month month and a half because it does it has the potential to uh, <laughs> affect the mechanical systems and so the as the architectural design develops mechanical system designs will follow and so we don't want to push that say to the end of design development it's better to have it at the beginning of design development so there's no exact date when you'll see um, that incorporated into the drawings aside from by the end of design development it will be um, but the design team had requested that um, the lbc provide direction in the first month month and a half so by mid-february Okay, just Christine, hold on one second, Sean. Oh, thanks, Austin. Um, yeah, no, I think this calendar is helpful. You can see when it's presented and then when it's proposed to be approved. Um, what types of things, uh, Craig, would be in the interior design schemes? Is that going to include like the the um, bathroom decisions? Is it a whole bunch of decisions that are included within that that sort of terminology? Um, just what what are the types of things are going to be part of that design scheme vote? Uh, great question. So the the bathroom, the the toilet partitions, 
does sort of fall under that umbrella. Um, but more specifically, it's the finished materials throughout the building, um, both the materials and the color. So the design team will be um, presenting um, their, what they propose for flooring, for ceilings or no ceilings in the case where we're exposing um, the mass timber, uh, wall finishes, be it tile in some areas, paint in most areas, um, even things like, uh, you know, the, with the, the handrails and guardrails, what they'll look like. Presenting a package based on their, you know, professional um, recommendation for your consideration. So there will be some opportunity to say, oh, we, we like this, um, these, actually, let me back up. The materials are one question, and that will largely be dictated by the, the money that we have available in the construction budget. But then coloration is another consideration. So you can imagine, all right, the team says, most of the walls are painted drywall. All right, well, now there are all kinds of you know, schemes and variations of those paint colors that they can present. And so they'll present something that they think represents sort of a modern, you know, library, some place that is, um, you know, comfortable based on the feedback we received from um, from the public. Uh, and then you will all have the opportunity to uh, weigh in, ask them to make adjustments, and then, um, you know, uh, approve a final kind of look. Thank you. Um, can I quickly follow up, Austin? And I sure, apologize. Please, sure. Go ahead. Um, so that makes sense. And that, I mean, that seemed like pretty major decisions, um, that those votes. Um, I think in terms of the costs, it sounds like you're going to help us evaluate, make sure the things that we proposed are within our, our budget. Um, it seems like a lot of decisions that will be part of that is, is, is it going to be like, here's a room and we look at the room and say, yeah, we like the way that all goes together. Or is it um, I feel like I would have a hard time saying, yeah, I like this color more than this color um, without, you know, more context. Yes. So that's a, a great point. So um, I don't know exactly how Feingold Alexander is going to do it, but a, a common way is to present a uh, palette. And so they put together a, a board, either a physical board or more likely a PDF, and it will show little snippets. I think they did a similar thing for the exterior. Um, when we were trying to decide metal panel, uh, brick, you know, they'll, they'll show maybe like a, an image, like a 3D rendering or image um, either of our building or of a similar building, some a look that they think would be appropriate. And then they'll have these little color swatches and they'll say, okay, here's the, the tone of the, the wood that we're proposing for the mass timber. And here's a a couple paints that we think go well with it, your your field, which is like just sort of your general walls, plus maybe accent walls or trim. Uh, then they'll show you like maybe a little snippet of the, the doors, you know, the wood, um, you know, if they suggest maple or oak and, you know, what color. And so they'll lay it all out on this board or palette and um, say, you know, here, this is the scheme that we recommend. And then we can discuss, but um, I typically they would not show, you know, this room looks like this. It's more like this is the feel, the general okay. feel and the general concept. And then they use their professional judgment to apply it. And, um, and there will be opportunities once <clears throat> later on, it would be, a, it, it gets more technical. The drawing gets more technical and less um, illustrative, but they um, at some point they'll have a package where it'll probably be in the uh, construction document phase where you could go and look at what every color wall is, what floor materials in every single room, what carpet color or tile color is in every single room. And uh, usually for that, it would be a smaller, that would be like a design subcommittee thing where we go through and um, and talk, oh, we, we think this room should have a, a lighter feel can you get rid of that accent wall color and just do like the base color everywhere, whatnot. So um, you'll be in this phase, you'd be um, approving the general palette. Okay. I'll just quickly say um, to Christine, I'm gonna lean heavy on the design subcommittee for uh, <laughs> items on those decisions. So. 
Thank you, Sean. That was very helpful. Um, uh, before we go back to Christine, because she had a very good question that I don't want to lose, which is to the extent that the triangle is going to move for public input, how is that going to play out in terms of the blue diagram, the blue thing that we were just looking at? So ultimately, we um, the hope is that whatever public input has been continuing to come in, um, Alex, remind me, what was the name of the uh, platform that you had used? Um, I, using a Padlet. Padlet, thank you. I knew it had a P in it. So, you know, all the information that we had received and gone through, we had sort of put it into buckets. All right, this is stuff the design team, we, we need to inform them of now. Uh, and we, we did that. Those were all the building massing comments. Um, uh, exterior material comments. There's a now there's a batch that we had previously identified as okay, this is interior design, so we don't have to deal with it. This is furniture, so we can put push those off. This is site design, you know, that's not something that's needed right now. Um, so the design team can look at all those comments for uh, that relate to the interior of the building, and um, Though in any of any new ones that maybe have come in since the last time we looked at it, which was probably may, may I just interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Craig. I think this needs to be worked out, and I don't think it, we, we're going to work it out right now. In other words, mm -hmm. I think you you need to think uh, with uh, Alex or with Christine about how the process that's represented in that triangle that you're going to move is going to work in relationship to these meetings. Uh, and I think that's what Christine was trying to get at at the beginning, Christine. So, um, like right now, we're working with the bathrooms, and you're collecting comments till the end of the month. So there was like a month or more. And I know we were tight on time, but I look at the landscaping, which a preliminary comes out on January 26th, and then a month goes by before we actually <clears throat> move. Where I have some concerns is, because I know everybody's going to agree on colors really easily, um, the interior, there's a one week. February 2nd to the 9th, and I have no idea what outreach is expected there, but I don't know if they can give us a preliminary of the pallets like a week or two before. So we can all, you're saying no, but, and then so. even more concerning the external um, colors or textures or whatever, it's a two day, February 14th to the 16th, which mm -hmm. that actually just seems impossible. Mm -hmm. But like Austin said, I think this needs some, I know FAA is working really hard and time is time, but I just need some more details on this to figure it out. So um, th those are valid concerns. However, I will, um, and I, I don't mean to be glib about it, but you know, the, the town hired Feingold Alexander, I presume because you saw some of their work and everybody, what felt comfortable with it. So they're gonna bring those same design aesthetics that they've used on other projects and the, and the town uh, ostensibly uh, found appealing and they're gonna apply that to this project. So I don't think they're gonna come with sort of off the wall, you know, recommendations that I, I, I feel pretty confident that what they'll show up with, everyone will say, ooh, that's really nice. That's very, uh, that's sort of right in line. And the adjustments that you guys will be making will be more like, I really don't like that tone. It's a little bit too dark. Can we make it a little lighter? I don't, that, that's how I sort of see this um, going. That's typically how it goes, um, especially with uh, you know, a very well experienced design team like Feingold Alexander. Christine, I'm do you have not any... worried about them. I'm just worried about yeah. everybody else. But yeah. it, okay, you do so... have a good point. If you have a hundred people and you ask them about paint colors, you're going to get a hundred different opinions. And sometimes people have to think about it. Just a, two days is really, you know, a lot. Um, and I'm not sure. Again, Alex will. Do, I'm not sure what the outreach expectations or hopes are. So just, so I, I'm done. I'll see y'all on, um, you know, right. we have uh, on the 19th. So. 
Thank you, Christine. Again, Craig, I'm going to say that I think we want a little bit of a more thought out um, response to this question about public input. Uh, I, I, we, you just said in the previous uh, schedule that you're going to move that triangle. And I think all Christine is asking is if we're going to move the triangle, how is that going to work in terms of getting the uh, reactions, whatever reactions we're going to get? But again, I just think it needs to be it needs to be worked out a little bit. Agreed. There, uh, some more refinement can be um, made. However, every town, every group has how they want to run it. So it's not uh, the OPM's role to sort of dictate that to you guys. I can. Okay. I'd be glad to commu yeah. communicate and coordinate with with Alex and Christine Great. offline. I think Great. that's sort of what's most in order. But. Yep. Ultimately, it's up up to you folks how you would like to incorporate that information that you've got from the public. I think some coordinating, communities, coordinating some communities with Alex, don't at all. So, yep, coordinating so you guys with Alex are, are commendable for doing so. Sorry, coordinating with Alex and Christine, I think would be a good thing to do. Okay, will do. Thank yep. you so much. Thank you, Christine. Um, Alex on outreach. Thanks. Um, if I can share my screen, that would be great. Um, so the bathrooms um, outreach had uh, the first of two public forums on Tuesday. We did one at 9 a.m. We'll have another one next Tuesday at 6 p.m. It's a recorded meeting. Um, and we're using pretty much the same things we've used before so people are familiar. So we're using the Padlet again. Um, we're actually using a online survey as well as there's a, um, a paper survey at the library. And there's a bulletin board set up again, showing um, the different bathroom stall designs. And then there's a paper survey with a little box that people can put into it. We actually opened up um, things on December 15th, not surprisingly, uh, people were busy through the holidays. So we're actually really just starting to, um, to see uh, responses coming in. Um, we met with the Libraries um, Equity, Justice, Inclusion Subcommittee to ask for some recommendations around um, putting the survey together, what it should look like, as well as who we should reach out to. Um, and uh, we have reached out to a number of groups um, specifically, including at the high school um, is the SAGO, which is the Sexuality and Gender Alliance Club. Um, also reached out to the Stonewall Center at UMass. Um, we have some connections with them through um, uh, programming we've done in the past, um, as well as to the organization Translate Gender, um, as well as to Trans Health. Um, and so those are just some of the groups that we're reaching out to specifically, um, as well as collecting data through the, through the library. Um, so um, again, we're using the Padlet, which I think everybody can see. So similar format to what we've done in the past, everybody can go look at this and read. So anybody on the committee as well as the public can go and see. Um, we did a rating system this time so people could look at the different stalls and rate as well as add any comments that they have at the bottom. Um, and again, just like in the past, people can add their own pictures of, and things that they like about the designs. Um, there's also a link to the public uh, forum presentations as well as a link to the actual meeting so people can access the presentation as well as the meeting from the Padlet. Um, and then they can actually also access the survey from um, our Padlet, from the Padlet as well. Um, we also, uh, so far on the survey, we've got 48 responses um, in so far. So the survey, again, I can, <coughs> people want to see this data. So um, it's like a five second survey, five questions, super easy. You know, have you ever used a multi-stall? Um, so far, our respondents, 68, almost 69% have. Um, if they've used them, we've asked them to give us feedback um, about what they liked or what they didn't like, which people have done, which has been really nice. Um, the proposed uh, design of the stalls, we've gotten back, uh, so 52% semi-private, 31% maximum, and 16 on the standard. 
um, ask for any thoughts just generally about uh, design elements or features that they'd like to see. And again, people have put their comments in here. Um, we then asked people to um, tell us what uh, most closely describes their gender. So we have a sense of who we're getting responses back from. So uh, our biggest response so far are uh, cisgendered women. Um, we do have 23% non-binary, some transgender, uh, gender fluid, gender queer. Um, and then we also have age groups. So, so far it's actually a pretty nice balance in terms of age groups that we're hearing from. And then the last thing that we asked for were um, people to check all that apply. So if they are a parent or a caregiver of a child in the different age groups, but then also if they are a parent caregiver of a child who's transgender, non-binary, non gender expansive, um, but then also if they assist uh, an adult uh, or a child with a disability who's the same gender or a different gender. Um, so it's a quick survey um, so far, uh, good responses from people. Um, uh, one thing I, and so we closed our period January 15th because it's after, after the last public outreach, I'm learning as we go, I wanted to have a little bit more of a cushion between the date that, that Colliers gave us so that there was potentially more time for discussions with the architects or whatever needed to happen. And so to that point, um, Craig, you made a comment um, that this committee had approved the layout of the bathrooms. And I guess I want to find out if there's a difference from the architects between, you know, footprint and layout, because certainly the feedback that we're getting from people so far the layout that we have sort of still looks gendered in the sense that you have to, what we're hearing from a lot of people is if I have to choose which way to go, that's not comfortable, right? If it's, if it is a, a all user, you know, restroom, then I want to, you know, walk in and not have to decide whether to go right or left. And so I guess what I want to make sure of or touch base with the architects is, you know, footprint fine, but you know, we're, we're hearing, we're hearing a lot of really good feedback from people. Um, who probably have more experience than you know our 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 small group of people, and I just want to make sure that we can relay that um, to the architects and you know when that timeline needs to happen um, as well. Craig, if I may, Austin. Sure. Craig. So um, the wall layout is not set in stone, but um, it we are definitely heading in that direction or I think the design team is hoping that that wall layout is set in stone. It, it, I think they were responding to the, the town's desire to have gender inclusive layout that also had kind of an emergency way to kind of back out of it for you know low expense um, and, and sort of go back to a previous um, concept of the gendered bathrooms. Um, I th think if we asked them, they would probably be willing to look at other options if there was specific um, a specific desire for a certain thing. But I, I believe that the time of um, them kind of pitching out different ideas, that is more of a schematic design phase effort. And now it's, okay, here are the wall placement. Yes, there are still decisions to be made about um, the partitions themselves and, and many of the details, but um, ideally, you know, we are kind of locked in now to, like you said, the footprint, um, you know, maybe if there is something subtle that can be done, um, but um, I think that's, okay. we're, we're, we're almost at that point where, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna stick with the layout and then decisions within that layout can still be made. So I've got others waiting here, Paul. Yeah, Alex, where is the results of that survey? Is that online someplace? Uh, not yet, because it's still open. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so so the Padlet, you can check out yourself, but the survey, I can send people the, yeah, we just have to decide how you want me to. So when it's complete, it will be on the on the, our building site? Y yeah, yeah. And also, I, I guess that's one thing I wanted to ask people around is, um, 
it is a survey, um, but there is some personal information, um, not in the sense like there's some sensitive information, right? I think people are being really candid about their experiences in bathrooms, both negative and positive. And I, I know nobody is going to be identifiable necessarily by their comments, but I want to be sensitive to if someone's shared a story about you know, attempted rape or, or some other issue, I want to be sensitive to that. So I guess I look for a little direction um, from the committee about that. I, the reason I'm asking oh. is that, um, you know, there are a lot of you, you've, there were a lot of comments there that I would really like to have read. And yeah. at some yeah. point. So when that comes to it, I'd like to be able to read those. And I thought those surveys really interesting. So thank you for doing yeah. that. Yeah, no problem. And I'm and I'm happy if people want. I mean, I can set. I mean, I've been reading them as they come in, which is kind of nice for me to process. And I can send. The, I can just send it to this committee. You know, as we get it's up to you, <laughs> however you want. If you just want them at the end, that's fine. <laughs> okay, Sharon. Yeah, I just I want to start by thanking Alex and the outreach committee uh, for delving into this really important issue. Um, really important. And, and in fact, I wish that I had had sunk my teeth into it more deeply a couple of years ago. Um, and so fat, fast forward to yesterday where I had this really great conversation with the library's department heads, you know, the staff. And, and I, I won't get into all the issues with all of you. We can do that during a design committee meeting. But I guess my comments are to Craig, who, you know, Craig, I appreciate you completely. And I really appreciate FAA's work and their time. And I, I so I get that. But this is something that I feel like we can't screw up. And um uh so and why this is important is because right now what we're showing are those walls but what what we have also seen based on uh other architects who have really dug into this topic is an example of a, a more open concept kind of a thing so no one has to choose left or right um anyways i so same footprint but i would love the opportunity to literally take down some walls if possible so more later but i i i i guess my my ultimate comment is this is something we don't want to get wrong as opposed to the colors i don't care if it's the walls are gray or purple that's less important than than this thank you christine um yeah, so I remember Josephine talking about how the walls could come down quite easily on either side of the sinks on the top and the bottom. I know we don't have the design up right now, so that the three sinks and the three sinks kind of become an island. Um, and she said those could be left open. So you come in two different doors, but it feels like one room. So that I don't think is a big design thing. It's the same wall, the same supports I put in would just open up areas um in the room craig tell me if i'm and the other thing i thought that the designers were looking into was i still feel really strongly about having a single occupancy family bathroom on that garden level um so that we do get it right and everybody has an option to feel comfortable when going to the bathroom uh xander Yeah, I, um, I want to echo, I think that the town, the the level of comments that we're receiving and how vulnerable people are willing to be um, is a demonstration of how much the town wants to get this right. And so I do want to uh, just agree with what's been said. I also think um, as we re-coordinate the timeline, it's gonna be important for us just to be honest about mitigating expectations. Um, because it does sound like there are, don't worry, I'm parked just so everyone knows. Um, the, but I do think we just wanna be honest that like Valentine's day and the day after it are all we're giving to uh, the outside colors because we wanna get this right in terms of people feeling comfortable inside the building. Um, whereas if you feel really strongly about 
the color of the exterior walls. We're only giving it two days to make sure you. I lost you a little bit. Were you were you done, Xander? You cut off very quickly. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just think we need to be honest with people that like there are going to okay. be some issues that sure. we seek input on, and there are some issues that like are not going to be designed by quarterback or right. by committee. Sorry. Right. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, Christine. Um. Yeah. Um. Thanks, Alex. And um, I you listed a lot of groups that you've reached out to. I'm just wondering, have you reached out to the senior center, any religious groups, and is any of this information posted in our three libraries right now as a way of, because I know a lot of, especially the older people, a large population of our town and the library um, are over 65, and I don't know if they're necessarily going to see this information online. Alex? Yeah, so sorry, Christine, what I said at the beginning um, and may have gotten blended in is so there are actual paper copies of the surveys in the library for people to fill them out old school and then they get entered in to that format. Um, uh, the survey and Padlet were sent out to uh, the PGOs, to each of the town councilors requesting that they send it out to their constituents. To so. Yes, so all the same. I'm not just targeting uh, support groups of, uh, you know, non binary, transgender, gender queer, but I, I do want to make sure that that group is included in the conversation. But yes, we're reaching out to library users, which is the community. So the senior center did get reached out to. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, Christine, because there are about five of us reaching out to different people. So like one group got reached out to today. Like, so I, they're on the list, whether they've gotten anything yet, I don't know, but I would assume yes. I can only, I can only say the ones that I've reached out to, not everybody okay. else. Uh, Sharon. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, to allay some of Christine's fears. So uh, with the conversation that the staff had, so, so the step we've been librarians for a very long time and and we've seen it all and everything that we've seen we also know is not going to go away there is always going to be sex and drugs and alcohol use in libraries especially in the bathrooms and so i i want i want everybody to know i want the community to know that the staff are coming from this place where they want to protect everybody and make everybody feel safe. And so when you look at, at the options, we're going to have to weigh a lot of these pros and cons because you've got the privacy concerns, you've got the safety concerns, and you've also got public preference. And, and, and you've got some of the patrons over here who absolutely are very comfortable with full-blown, you know, everybody using the same facilities, no problem. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum who was not comfortable with that at all. They all want single stalls. And so the library staff we're, we're really struggling with this. So, um, and, and in fact, I, I would call on George because he was a part of this conversation yesterday. Um, uh, long, long story short, we kind of felt like this open concept idea was a great idea with floor to ceiling uh, stalls, but also with the addition of a separate single stall uh, bathroom, which yes, it's gonna cost more money, but then it gives everybody an option. I, before Alex talks, I didn't know if George could sneak in a word or two. George? Uh, yeah, uh, really just echoing what Sharon said. I mean, I think I think there's going to be absolutely no way to please everyone with this decision. Uh, I, I think it's going to come down to what is the best compromise that's going to make the most people happy and make them as safe and comfortable as possible for 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 our patrons um i i don't think it's going to be there's going to be one golden solution that's going to make everybody happy with this one right alex thanks um so um sure i'm going to share my screen again i have permission already but just so people know what you're talking about <laughs> um so what sharon is talking about so there are a couple of different types so um this is a design at an elementary school. Uh, so it's an open design where you've got uh, 
full privacy stalls. Um, and so that's what she was referring to when she talked about the open design. Um, this is at a synagogue, which is just sort of classic floor to ceiling. Um, and then this is at a university, um, which is kind of what Christine was talking about with the open sinks. Um, and you know, the, the one thing that I would say is in um, the feedback that I've gotten either from architects who do this or from the public is that the design is critical, right? It, if, if it's not properly designed, that's, that's when they fail, right? Is because people have to be comfortable walking into these bathrooms. Um, and we have an opportunity because we're not trying to retrofit to gendered bathrooms, right? Where people, I mean, I go to Amherst Cinema and I, I still go right. I know there's not a sign anymore, but I know I go right, you know? Um, and so I think having this opportunity to, to build something properly based on our community, not necessarily based on, you know, what somebody did it somewhere else is gonna be really important for this to be successful so that we don't have to go back to gendered bathrooms. Um, so again, I just like getting it right, as Sharon said, is, right. is really important to success. Paul? So I'm going to do the obligatory, and there's also a cost element. We know that those, you know, individual rooms have, ex, you know, significantly higher costs because of HVAC requirements and things like that. So I think we are also trying to keep this project within the constraints that we already have in an inflationary time. So we have to be highly cognizant of what the costs are. I know we want to get it right. I know we want to meet everybody's needs, but there are also there's some things that we have to think about as we move down that road. So I just want to say um, I'm a little now. Um, I want to make sure I understand what we're hearing. So I think there's a little difference between what Craig was saying and what Alex was asking. And I want to make sure that I'm understanding that. I thought what Alex was saying was, uh, is there still a possibility of uh, moving to a more open concept design within the footprint? And Craig seemed to be saying, no, <laughs> we, we, we've already made a decision in the architects of going ahead. Is that what you were saying, Craig? Um, Come on, just say it. I mean, what were you saying? Because That's probably get, what I was saying. However, yeah. seeing some of those images Alex showed. Alex, would you be able to be willing to share your screen again and, and flash through? Um, so this one here, yep. you can have this bathroom. Within, uh, the foot, within the footprint that we've already approved. Right. I'm, I'm presuming this is like looking at some stalls and then there's some more stalls behind the, the, the camera where specifically you can have a sink you can have a low wall that same concept can can happen at uh in the footprint or the the layout that feingold right. alexander has come up with or this wall could be in front of us where that yellow um i don't know if that's a post or a column that yellow thing that could be a solid wall in between mm -hmm. the, the bathrooms on one side and then the bathrooms presumably behind the, the camera person um um, Alex, if you flash to the next one. Um, so this one, yes, they could probably within the footprint configure um, something that looked like this. Uh, it would be wider and it wouldn't be one row. It would still be two rows, but they could probably do like sinks on one end and one side. So yes, they could probably do this one as well. And then if you go to the next one and they could probably even do something similar to this where you've got no wall in between and this kind of um, sink or laboratory stand and then it, if the town or library had to go back then they would just you you could rip that out and put in a new wall and put in you know old-fashioned sinks so um i'd like to revise what i was saying before okay, great and i think all of these um schemes are are doable within the footprint and general parameters that feingold alexander is working with um alex is that responsive it is. So then my question is, when do we have to choose that format? Because I know it's not February, like, right, that's sooner. About, so this is part of the reason I closed things on January 15th. We, we decided to close things January 15th. So like if we have that input by January 15th so that this group can then make that decision, does that 
Does that work for fine gold? Craig. Craig looks frozen. Well, pending pending Craig's reappearance, Christine. Well, I mean, I I love the look of those three bathrooms, um, but the stalls are bigger square footage wise when you have a full door. And I mean, you can tell if we pull the pictures up, they're bigger than I'm looking at the, you know, the schematic here and a standard bathroom has a much smaller footprint each stall. So I don't know how, so code is all about your load and how many toilets you need for the number of people that come in your facility. And I assume Feingold just did to meet the minimum um, because we have a function room there. Um, I don't see how they would fit those bigger stalls in that same footprint. And I'm also, again, concerned that there's, they've got to find some room for a single only stall. So um, I think FAA was trying to get us to say like, we agree on this size and this layout. And I just hear us backpedaling and questioning. And right. I, I don't know if Craig, if you heard this or not, but what does this mean for FAA? So um, what I was trying to say when I lost my connection was in response to Alex is that um, I would have to ask FAA, you know, so when they need to know the final, final layout or when they, you know, when that would happen, it's sometime soon. It's definitely not like this summer, uh, but it, you know, I'll ask them and I, I'm guessing it's going to be in the next couple of weeks or month, month and a half. Um, okay. And then so Christine, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I just wanted to respond to one of the things Christine was saying. And yes, I think it would be extremely helpful slash necessary to stay within the footprint that we've defined, but their current design has that um, maze entry, which um, takes a lot of space. And if they give up on that, if we they get rid of the maze entry and more of just an open door and the full privacy stalls, then there's a lot more room for the stalls and the sinks. So I think as long as we stay within that footprint, uh, there is still some flexibility. So you let us know, Craig, Alex has said the survey is going to close on the 15th of January. And on the basis of what you've just said, but you want to let us know that's still within a frame in which uh, we could uh, get FAA to be responsive to what we learn. I will, I will ask them, but my gut feel right. is that, yeah, they'll be able to make adjustments based on the feedback through the 15th. Uh, if the feedback that we get by the 15th, they'll make, be able to make adjustments on the other side. Yeah. Great. Christine, is your hand still up or is that new? Christine. Yeah, I just had one more question to sure. Craig. So it's my understanding why they, like part of why they have this, like I call it like the airport entrance, you know, um, was uh, one so that they had that wall, which they said they could take down parts of it to give more of an island for the bathrooms, but then it could easily be put back to gender, which we, but, but the main part is there's no doors. Like there's no doors and if yet you're not looking into the bathroom. So if the option, I just want, you know, I wouldn't want to see doors are problematic. We saw at UMass, they ended up taking their doors off. So yeah, I, I know they've got some tough. I would love to have a hard date when they have to have this area defined. And from Craig will Craig will get yep. us that. I will get that. Great. Christine, are you all set? Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, Alex, anything else from outreach? Nope. I would just say if you haven't uh, sent out the survey and the pilot to everybody you know, you should. Great. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. Our next, uh, our next public forum is uh, on Tuesday, the 10th at 6 p.m. Great. And thank you. Thanks for organizing that. Okay, next is correspondence. I know of none. Topics not anticipated by the chair. There are none that I didn't anticipate. <laughs> next is public comment. And we seem to have nine attendees. Thank you all for coming. If anybody would like to make a comment, if you would raise your virtual hand.
Okay, I see no request for public comment. Thank you all. Thanks for the work that uh, uh, Colliers is doing. Uh, thanks for your help. Uh, let's adjourn the meeting. See you all soon. Thank you, everyone.